Hey everybody, today we are going to go over an augment guide for what to take on stage 2-1 because I'm going to be honest with you, the early game is pretty much the only thing that matters in TFT. It sets up everything for the rest of your game. So if you have a good early game, playing everything else is going to be infinitely easier. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that through augment picking because uh, ever since augments were introduced, it is probably one of the most important parts of the game because it literally defines what you're going to do each and every game. So a uh, couple of notes before we get into this. So this is only going to cover early game augments. So just because I say an augment isn't good to take on stage 2-1 doesn't mean you cannot take it later. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at this. And we do have some general tips before we get into each and every single one of them and also like when to take them, which is most important because just because an augment is good data wise or just because someone says it's good doesn't mean you should always take it. And I'll go over the situations where you should. So first things first, there are generally like three types of augments, trait related ones, economy related ones, and combat related ones. So combat and trait ones, they're kind of similar. Pretty much you either provide a lot of strength to your board immediately, or you play more for the late game, build up more gold or HP and kind of use that. So uh, what you want to do in the early game is try to either full win streak or full lose streak. And if you can't do that, just try to remain relatively healthy and try to set something up for the mid game. In general, economy augment, they're great when you have no upgrades, when you get like a big gold opener. You know how some games you get two item components or even one item component, but you get like tons of gold as compensation for that. Economy augments like just magnify that into like a huge build up of gold later on. And then combat related ones, you generally take them if you want a win streak. Uh, these are things that give you like items or things that make your team stronger, such as like second wind or exiles. And then lastly, trait related augments, they're just more for like tunneling you into a certain build, which is good and bad. There's some give and takes there, but generally trait related augments perform a lot better in terms of like the data compared to economy and combat related ones. And the reason why is because you only take the trait related augments if you have a good start for that trait. So that's why they always should outperform every other augment. Um, so that's just one thing to keep in mind. That's why you just can't look at data and be like, oh, this augment's OP because the data says it's OP. Like that's just complete nonsense. And this is one of those examples of how it's kind of like biased in the data. So let's say all the anima squad augments are really OP right now. Um, they're not, but let's just pretend they are. Uh, that doesn't mean you always take it because it's OP, because the data says it's OP. You only take it when you have a game that you can go anima in. So we're, we're gonna go through all of that. Um, other general tips is like, right now I've broken down the augments into uh, like four categories. I have like the giga category, which is pretty much always take them, like almost always. I have like the always category, which is like, yeah, that's pretty good. Like generally you take those in like 90% of your games, as long as you don't get a giga one. And then yes is like, yeah, do it most of the time. Sure is like, all right, yeah, we'll just take it. Like maybe I won't spend my reroll on this. And then I have the eh category, which is like, you know what, if I have like the perfect start for this, or if like it's a silver augment, I don't feel like re-rolling the augment, um, then like you would be like, eh, I guess I'll take this. And then I have the no one. So no, you pretty much never take. And if you have like three augment selections, that's one is eh, one is no, and another is no, you probably should re-roll. Uh, maybe even two eh's and a no is a re-roll as well. Speaking of re-rolls, like if you ever get a hero augment, cause we will do those as well, if you ever get like a 1-1-1 or a 2-2-2, two, 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 you should almost always reroll aggressively because there aren't that many of those augments available. So if we scroll down to the hero augments right now, uh, we have like around 25 hero augments and you could pretty much see 15 of them whenever you use all your rerolls. So if it's a 1-1-1, you should always be aggressive and try to go for like one of the top five augments if you can or if it makes sense for your board. Uh, but let's just get right into the guide and like when and how to take each and every augment. So right now for patch 13.7, Gadgetine Heart, super, super good right now because Gadgetine Nar is one of the best comps right now if you could get it. And you really unlock the potential at five Gadgetine. So you normally get to five Gadgetine by getting a Nunu, but getting Gadgetine Heart removes the need of getting Nunu. So you could pretty much just get your strongest board at a very, very early state. Uh, next up we have Infinitim Heart. So Infinitim Heart is going to be very strong because they're just like the most spammable comp right now. They're S tier on my meta snapshot at bunnymuffins.lol slash meta. And that's the comp when people are in my discord, they're like, hey, what comp should I only spam for this patch? 
It's going to be the Infinitim comp, so that's why it's always up there. Uh, pretty much always take those. Uh, try to have at least like one or two Infinitim units. But if you're not in like Masters or above, uh, you could even do Infinitims with zero Infinitim units. Uh, next up, we have Exiles. Exiles you pretty much always take because it's a flexible augment. It scales into the late game. It's good early game. And there's pretty much no downside to it right now at the numbers it's at. Of course, it could change in future patches. Maybe I do one for every single patch uh, whenever I have time to. Uh, Band of Thieves, very similar to Exile. So one thing to keep in mind with item augments is that they're much better in the early game than they are in the late game. So Band of Thieves, item grab bag, portable forge, things like that, they're always going to have better stats if you take them at stage 2-1 compared to 4-2. And that's just the way item economies work. So if you only have like three components at the start of the game, that's pretty average for TFT. Uh, you get one full item. So you pretty much increase your items by 66% whenever you take Band of Thieves. Compare that to stage 4-2 when you might have eight components and maybe four completed items. Adding one item is only increasing your items by 25% instead of the 66% as it does at stage 2 ones. That's why item augments are like very powerful in the early game. Same with Exiles, you pretty much can always take it, especially since Band of Thieves, it fits in almost every comp. Uh, preparation is pretty good if you're flexing and you want to do like a delayed win streak. Item grab bag, pretty much the same thing as Band of Thieves, except you have to play a little more flexibly. So item grab bag, you could get something like a pure AD item. And if you have, uh, let's say like a full ability power start, let's say you have like a Lux 2 or something like that, obviously you could get kind of screwed, but um, on average, it's going to work out more than it's going to hurt you. Uh, cybernetic uplink, this one's only good right now. It's marked as a sure because uplink just works really well in a lot of the big comps right now. So all the spell slinger comps, all the hacker LeBlanc comps, um, even like anima squad can use it. There, there are a lot of comps right now that just use the mana really well. So that's why it's fine. And it, this is also really good for cybernetic in general. Uh, there are some games where you start off with five components. If you ever get one of those games, cybernetic starts are going to be like even more powerful. Um, one thing to keep in mind is if you do get those five component openers, stuff like Band of Thieves and Item Grab Bag, while still good, they are slightly weaker. So always keep that in mind. Uh, Defender Heart, only take this if you have three or more attack damage opponents. So you have to scout for that. Uh, second Wind, this is pretty much the same as Exiles. Uh, but I think Second Wind is a little bit better in the early game compared to the late game. Uh, but it really just depends on the numbers. Future Sight, yeah, just take it if you want to be a rat or something like that. Thrill the Hunt, only take this if you have two stars. Thrill the Hunt is really good at wind streaking in the early game, and it's probably one of the strongest wind streak augments because you heal a flat amount of health, and sometimes that health is like more than 50% of your unit's health pool, which is pretty big. It's more healing than you'll ever get from like a Bloodthirster, more than you'll get from like a Celestial Blessing, even more than you can get from like a Death's Defiance. But it only works if you kill a unit. So if you don't have any two-star units, you're not going to get any Thrill of the Hunt proc. So if you have someone like a Renekton 2 that does decent damage, maybe I should add that over here. Only if you have two stars that do damage, uh, you're going to get a lot of benefit from Thrill of the Hunt. Something that wouldn't really work well with this is maybe if you have like Poppy 2, Rel 2, and like no damage dealer or something like that. Uh, you could still take it, but it's going to be a little more difficult to do. Like someone like Renekton uses it perfectly because he both takes damage and deals damage really well. Um, anyone in the back line that's two star generally is pretty good with it. Um, but yeah, Duelist Heart, only take this if you could build a Locket or four Duelists. Pretty much Duelist Heart is going to depend on how strong Duelists are in that meta. And right now they're like only okay if you could do a four Duelist opener or if you have a Locket. Preferably both, but we can't always get that situation. Uh, Pandora's item, sure, it's just an average augment. Triforce, only use if you have three costs on 2 1. So if you randomly get dropped like a Kaisa Nyla or something like that and you kept them on your bench throughout stage one, and then you get offered a Triforce, like, yeah, sure, use it. Same with like any other three costs. I'm j I just named random ones. Uh, but Morgana's gonna be good with that. Ram is gonna be good with that. Pretty much anything like that. Uh, but if you don't have any, like, I've seen people not have any three cost units on 2 1. And they take this augment because they're like, oh, I'm just going to force Triforce reroll. And it's probably not the smartest thing, but I guess it's a free country. You could do whatever you want. Sure Shot Heart, only take this if you have at least one Last Whisper component. But if you have a full Last Whisper, then like, yeah, pretty much always take it. Pandora's Bench, average, good for like rerolling or something like that. Featherweights, it's decent for win streak. You have to keep in mind with silver augments, uh, these aren't augments that you have to use the whole game. So you could just take Featherweights if it's your best option let's say you get like featherweights and then like 
one of these or something like that and you don't want to re-roll your augment like yeah just take it just try to win streak if you have upgrades but if you don't have upgrades and you can't win streak or you can't do a one or two cost re-roll then probably just re-roll the augment uh, tiny titans it's good best with econ opener because getting health is an econ augment knife's edge it's okay for streaking it's not the best but um, there are worse things to pick Celestial Blessing, this is more of like a late game augment. So yeah, this does give you combat abilities such as like healing, but it's mainly geared towards like comps that have backline carries that don't really need too much healing, but just need to heal a little bit from the AoEs that they take. So it's really good for late game, but early game doesn't really do that much. I'd rather have Thrill the Hunt, for example. Uh, consistency, only take this with like Econ openers or if you have like zero upgrades. Cybernetic Shell, yeah. <laughs> Man, Cybernetic Shell is like probably one of the worst augments. But if it's a silver one, you could use it for streaking. But yeah, you're not happy about taking this. Makeshift Armor, only take this if you have a lot of offensive items because then you get the most value from the augment. Electro Charge, only take this with a two-star tank. So that could be Poppy, Blitzcrank, Renekton, uh, Rel, like any, any two-star, one or two cost tank. It's going to do fine with Electro Charge. And it's even better if you have a Static Shiv Slam or an Ionic Spark Slam, but that's not mandatory. Battle Mage, eh, it's okay. Don't really want to use that unless you're forcing one of the Battle Mage comps. Ox Force Heart, uh, you could take this if you get a good opener for Ox Forces. So if you have like two bows or something like that, it is takeable, though Ox Force Heart isn't that great because all the Ox Force units are kind of good. And we're going to contrast this with Ox Force Crest, which is a lot better when we go into the gold section. Spellslinger Heart, only take if you have at least four copies of Spellslinger. So that could mean two Luxes and two Annies. That could mean a Lux two-star and one Annie, uh, things like that. I'm going to mark down a lot of these trait augments as having like, oh, you want at least four units. It could be in like almost any combination. So if you need like five Anima Squad units, or if I say you need to, that could be like two Nasuses, one Jinx, and two Silases. Or it could be like a Silas two two Nasuses and zero Jinxes. Um, these are all approximates, but they're like good general guidelines that I kind of use too. Uh, Star Guardian, four copies of Star Guardians, or if you have Nyla from the early game starts. First aid kit, probably don't want that one. I have taken it a couple of times in my life in the early game, and that's when I started the game with two Sonas, and Sona does a lot of healing, so I guess it's okay. Uh, Luden's Echo, only take this with blue buff that you can build right away. Admin Heart, only do this if you get four admin on two one, which is super, super rare. Uh, but I'd pretty much pass on that. Like once we get towards like the bottom half, it's like you want to just not take these. AFK, like I guess you could. Obviously you want Econ Opener with that. Hacker Heart, only if you're forcing hackers with good components. This is generally like a little weak right now, but if you got an early LeBlanc or something like that, uh, you could try to go for this. Brawler Heart, only if you have a two-star Brawler. Mascot Heart, only if you have an early Vex with at least one tier, or if you could get four mascots on two one, but that's like very, very difficult to do. Uh, Anima Squad Heart only with six copies of Anima units. So that could be, as we said before, a Silas 2, a Nasus 2, or like two Silas, two La Nasus, two Jinx, something like that. And then Cybernetic Implants, Renegade Heart, Heart Heart, just no on those. They're, they're just yeah, pretty weak right now. Uh, these other Silver Augments, you can't get them on 2 1, so we'll skip those for now. Gadgetine Crest and Infinitine Crest, same reason as before. They're just the OP comps right now and they're strong for the same reasons as we stated before. Star Guardian Crest, so notice how Star Guardian Crest is one of the best gold augments, but Star Guardian Heart is pretty low. It's down here, it's like very below average. And the reason why Star Guardian Crest is so much better than Star Guardian Heart is because a unit makes very good use of the emblem. That's the same case as Ox Force. We notice Ox Force is one of the top in gold as well. And because of that, uh, you could do some crazy comps such as Star Guardian Misfortune, which absolutely demolishes, cast multiple ults like throughout the entire fight, and just completely changes the look of your comp. Um, it's like getting a makeover for the comp, essentially. So sometimes crests are really good, sometimes hearts are a little better uh, for like relative strength for different traits. So you always have to keep that in mind too. Laser Core Heart, you want to play with at least three copies of Laser Core. Uh, Exile is good as the same reason before. Ox Force Crest. Uh, you want to have at least one copy of an Ox Force, but preferably you get like an Annie 2 from the orb, but that doesn't always happen. Portable Forge, really good because it's both flexible and it gives you an item in the early game and items are really good early on for win streaking. Uh, but this is the items you want right now. Zonia, Blitzcrank Hook, Manazane, 
all really good. So Zonia's is really good against the hacker meta. Blitzhook has just always been good. Mana Zane is great for forcing those like AP comps. Uh, Randuin's very underrated item. I feel like this is underused, especially by lower ELO players. Uh, but people in higher ELOs, they use Randuin's all the time because it's pretty much an extra support item that's incredibly good with stuff like Janna later on. But imagine you have like a three item tank and then you just add a Randuin's onto him. It's just like so much stats on them that it's kind of nuts. Uh, Collector is decent in the beginning if you have a lot of two stars that can reliably get a lot of kills and then the rest is like whatever. But even if you get some of the bad items from Portable Forge, it's still pretty good. Uh, preparation, like you just do the same like delayed win streak that we talked about before. Uh, salvage bin, just remember to slam all your items. So it's really good because a lot of times on stage two, you're like, oh, let me not build any items. And you kind of lose some value from that. But when you take salvage bin, you could like build all your items right away because you're going to sell those units later and then rebuild perfect items later on. So you could just slam really good early game items such as like ZZ Rot Portal or uh, Locket, which people typically don't build. But if you have salvage bin, it doesn't matter because you could build those like super strong early game items and then pivot into like the better late game items when the time comes. Uh, uplink, good for the same reason before. AP is just the meta right now. Like Hacker LeBlanc uses cybernetic uplink incredibly well. So you just take it for that. And most cybernetic augments are like decent in the early game, especially if you don't have buildable items or if you want to greed them. Mascot Crest, just force Vex. If you have a Vex or the four mascot or even a two star mascot, I think this is like good enough to take. Jeweled Lotus, good in pretty much every comp. Phony Frontline, you only want to take this if you can win streak. Um, but I guess if you can't, it, it is like semi takeable. I would say it's like a yes if you can win streak. It's like a eh if you can't win streak. Featherweights, if you want to reroll or win streak. Metabolic Accelerator, pretty much only with econ openers or no upgrades. I would kind of pass on it otherwise. Second win, same thing as Exiles. Spellslinger Crest, like yeah, if you have Spellslinger items or three or more Spellslinger units, then sure. Sunfire Board, sure. Ancient Archives are very good right now. Just make sure that you tailor your traits before you pop the tome. That's really all you have to do. Uh, Hustler, if you have at least one upgrade, I love taking Hustler for win streaking. Knife's Edge, sure, if you want to win streak. Cluttered Mind and Clear Mind, those are like fast eight comps. Um, like they are takeable, but they're not like amazing right now. Uh, Built Difference, pretty decent if you have some two stars and you want to win streak. Three's Company is like rich get richer, except you could get like really good three cost units. Triforce, only if you could play at least one three cost unit on two one, preferably two of them. Prankster Crest, sure, just play an Echo Comp. Scope Weapons, if you're forcing like the Brawler builds. Uh, Defender Crest, if you have three AD opponents, it's takeable. Again, you have to scout for that. Uh, calculated Loss, if you have Econ Opener or no upgrades. Brawler Crest, only if you have four plus Brawler units or a two star Brawler. Anima Squad Crest, only if you have six plus Anima units or if you have like a random upgraded damage unit. So if you randomly get like a two star Lucian at the start of the game and you could put a Crest on them, like. That's another reason to take it. Trade Sector, if you want to play it for a delayed win streak. Cybernetic Shell and Implants. If you have no buildable items, you could kind of use this to kind of just uh, wait for later on. Uh, but only take Implants if you have a Last Whisper component, such as Bow or Glove. Ascensions, like a whatever, sure. Uh, Thrill of the Hunt, only if you have two stars, same reason before. Celestial Blessing, that's more for late game. True Twos, if you have no upgraded units but really good items, that's when True Twos really shines. Uh, if you already have upgrades, your board can get a little too crowded if you take two Trues because you won't have enough unit slots to place everyone on the board. So only take this if you have like no upgraded units but with good items. Also, if you have bad items, don't take this because the whole point of taking this is to win streak. And if you have bad items, like you're just not going to be able to win streak. Uh, Axiom Mark, this is more for late game. It's not that great, but you could like force LeBlanc with it. Uh, Electro Charge, only with a two-star tank with Shiv or Ionic. Uh, makeshift Armor, only with offensive items. Riftwalker Crest, probably not. Duelist, only with four Duelists and a Locket. Uh, and the reason why this needs the four Duelists and Locket instead of just an and or is because at Crest, there's not really anyone that makes that great use of Duelist Crest. Like, yeah, there are some people that could use it like decently well, but if you compare that to Star Guardian Crest, uh, Star Guardian Crest makes Misfortune just a complete goddess, you know? Uh, whereas no, Duelist doesn't make anyone turn into like, I don't know, like a, a Grand Duelist or whatever. Uh, Underground Heart, like, if you're trying to get YouTube games, like, yeah, take Underground Heart. Battle Mage, probably not. Sure Shot Crest, not that great. No one really uses it that well. Um, Renegade Crest, 
Probably not. Renegades just aren't that great right now. You never see people go into a game and they're like, yeah, I'm going to force Renegades right now. So when that's not the case, like a lot of the crests just aren't as strong, but this could change in future patches. Rich get richer only with Econ Opener. Hacker Crest only if you have Gnar and 3 Hacker on 2-1. Other than that, I would kind of pass on this. Uh, but I guess you could take it to force Gnar, but that's like really tunneling your comp. Uh, combat Training only if you're forcing Gnar or Draven and you have a copy of them already to start training. Double Trouble, probably not. Admin Crest, no. Luden's Echo only with Blue Buff, but even then it's still a little risky. Uh, and then the rest of these, like, I mean, again, you could take them if you really want to, but I wouldn't. Oh, another thing to keep in mind when we're going through this list is that a lot of these are notes that I have for myself. So if you have like a play style that differs a lot from me, let's say you are a NAR one trick. Take these all the time then if you are just like only playing NAR. But uh, if you want to play like pretty flexibly, I'm, I'd say I'm like semi-flexible. There's only like one or two comps that I don't really play. Um, this is a list that I use to make my decisions. So uh, moving on into the prismatics and then after that we'll do the one, two, three heroes. Uh, Gadgetine crowned, always take this same reason before. Preparation, same thing. You guys are starting to notice a pattern, right? Like some of the good ones are just always up there. Hacker Crown is really good though. So Hacker Crest, not that good, but Hacker Crown is really good. And I'll tell you why. Hacker Crown gives you a full item. So you get a free hand of justice and you get a copy of LeBlanc. Whereas Hacker Crest, you just get a pike. So LeBlanc is obviously gonna be a lot better and you get a full item. If you compare that to other crowns, like uh, Anma Squad Crown only gives you a tier. So you're getting like a full item from the Hacker Crown, which is just incredible. Uh, golden Ticket, it's really, really good if you get it on 2-1. The earlier you get Golden Ticket, the better because you get more free rerolls. But always aim for like 2-cost reroll. 3-cost uh, or 1-cost reroll is okay, it's doable, but like the sweet spot is going to be 2-cost reroll. Uh, that doesn't mean like never take it if you're doing 3-cost or 1-cost, it's still good for that. But the ideal situation for Golden Ticket is going to be 2-cost reroll. Ancient Archives 2, same thing as Ancient Archives 1. It's pretty good, but just remember to tailor your traits. Cruel Pack do this. Uh, you level up to 6 at 2-1, and then you level up to level 7 at 2-2. Two, two. Some people skip the level up to level 7 at 2-2, two, two, but I've been doing that all the time. You know, just like risk it for the biscuit, you know? Electro Charge, if you have a 2-star tank, or like Shiv or Spark, take it. Same reason before, but the Prismatic one is a little bit better, so it's a little more flexible. Uh, laser Core Soul, if you have 4 more Laser Core units, then do that. And again, this doesn't mean like have 4 Laser Core, it just means have like 2 copies of Renekton, 2 copies of Ash, stuff like that. Uh, Radiant Relics, take that. Um, I had a list of what items to take. Hmm, let me add that. So yeah, it's going to be your Zeke's, Locket, Gloves, Shiv, Blue Buff, Archangels, Chalice, Spark, ZZ Rod. Those are all good, but obviously tailor the items to your team. So if you already have a Static Shiv, um, maybe like build Rageblade or something like that, even if like Rageblade doesn't look that good. Um, but like, yeah, always get an item that you like can build with your existing items that complement each other. But these are like the generally really good ones. Uh, Star Guardian Crown, if you have four or more Star Guardian units, sure. If you have Last Whisper component, then Built Different 3 is really good, or if you have at least one 2-star. Oxforce Crown, it's really good, but you prefer having one bow or tier. Prankster Crown, yeah, it's pretty good in the early game. Woodland, like, pretty good if you have a 2-star, but only really take this if you do have a 2-star. March of Progress, sure. Living Forward, sure. Underground Soul, sure. Featherweights, sure. Uh, obviously only reroll for this one. Windfall, if you have no upgrades, go for Windfall and then just like do maximum econ. Uh, Duelist Crown, like, I guess if you have a locket, do it. Um, obviously for these, we already went over a lot of them, so we're kind of going through them faster now. Defender Crown, if you have three or more AD opponents. Heart Crown, it's okay. You do get a full item and a Sona, so if you have, like, any tiers, like, yeah, take it. Uh, like, sure, if tier. Uh, Brawler Crown, if you have Brawlers, take it. Like, do I really need to say that? Ace in the Hole, this one's okay. It's actually not that great, but... I guess you could use it if you have like decent items for one of them. Uh, Spellslinger Crown, only with four or more Spellslinger units and with one tier to make blue buff Sona. Knife's Edge 3, not my personal favorite. Birthday Present, like I guess you could take this. Uh, Triforce, same reason as before, like only if you're playing three cost. Band of Thieves, surprisingly this one isn't that great because it ends up being like too many items. You don't have that many comps with like two secondary carries. Uh, mainly like other comps have like one Band of Thieves holder, but uh, there aren't many comps with two of them, so that's why it's a little lower. Double Trouble is like whatever, Cybernetic Uplink. It's good if you get it in the later parts of the game, but in the beginning, not as strong. Like all the other ones, like you may have noticed the Cyber ones are a little further down this time. 
Uh, but yeah, just all these other ones are just a lot stronger right now. There's really all there is to say to it. Uh, Earth grab bag, it's pretty much like a scuffed crown. So if you have like a buildable crown, like sure, do it, I guess. But um, generally only take this if your items are really bad and you want to make items right away. Or if you have a bunch of two stars that you want to like kind of win streak with. Uh, lucky gloves. This one's okay. Like if you have a glove component, it's pretty good if you can make like a second thieves gloves on the stage two carousel. Mascot crown, it's okay if you have the vexes. Quick draw soul, not the best, but I guess if you have like a Lucian reroll start or something like that, or like a Lucian two. But apart from that, like I wouldn't really take this. Oh, one thing to note about prismatic augments is that it's a lot more polarizing. So the good prismatic augments are a lot better compared to the bad prismatic augments when you're comparing it to like gold or silver. So gold is pretty balanced. Like there are a lot of takeable augments and like the really good ones aren't like infinitely better than the bad ones. But for prismatic, like the really good ones are infinitely better than the bad ones. So just keep that in mind when you're going through this list. Um, probably same with the hero augments. They're pretty polarizing. Uh, item grab bag. This one's really risky because you could just get like super screwed. But if you have a lot of two stars, then it's fine to win streak with. Curse crown, probably not. You don't have that many units to put in in the early game. Battle mage, it's really tunneling your comp. I wouldn't take it. Uh, admin crown, if it gives you like Camille 2 and you have a good admin for win streaking. So a good admin for win streaking is like healing whatever health every five seconds or something like that. That one's generally really good for win streaking because uh, it's a flat amount of health in the early game. Uh, but apart from that, like, it's, there are much better things to take. New Recruit, Wise Spending, Level Up, Sure Shot Crown. I guess Sure Shot, if you have a Last Whisper and it gives you Sivir 2, that's a very, very, very specific scenario. Um, but yeah, all these other ones I just wouldn't really take right now because um, there are just so many better ones to take. And for Prismatics, just like re-roll them, you know? Uh, it's not saying like never ever take these. I do like list out some like 1 in 100 games where you take Anima Squad Crown when it's like... You have Shojin from taking it, and you have like six plus anima units already, then like, sure, take it. But it's not gonna happen that often. And then for Aegis Crown, if it gives you an Alistair too, then I guess, sure, take Aegis Crown. But like, it's not, like these augments just are not that great. Like never take Super Souls though, that, that one is hot garbage. Let me, I forgot which, which one it ends with. I think it's like over here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for prismatics. Again, not saying you can like never take those, but it's pretty much never take those. Uh, onto the one cost and hero augments. So if you ever get a one, one, one or a two, 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 as we said before, like reroll aggressively, a one, 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 you want like the top, like these top ones, the yes, always or giga. So chronic hallucinations is the only giga right now. Uh, Lucian always, uh, and keep in mind, like for these, obviously, if you can get the two star of the unit, take these, and it's kind of like treat these like trait augments. So whatever trait rules we had before, kind of treat these in the same way because um, that's pretty much what it is. Uh, Ash laser focus. Um, I would probably only do this if you have like um, maybe two copies of Ash. Uh, Lucent Barrier is a good support one. Hyperbolic Time Chamber, if you want to like play Infinity Team and like level up really quickly, sure. Uh, Growth Spurt, your Steadfast Presence. It's like the text is really good. It gives you like a huge shield for like your whole team. It's very good for wind streaking, but Poppy just isn't played in that many comps, so that's why it's like kind of low. Uh, Silas is good for Anima Squad, so it's like same Anima Squad rules exist. Same with NASA Soul Eater. Divine Ascent, if you have like maybe three copies, then go for it. Uh, Re-energize and the rest down here, like probably not. <sighs> Reign of Anger, if you, unless you have like six or like five Renektons or something, like that's the only time I would take it, you know? Um, unless I like re -roll, used all my rerolls and my options were like Reign of Anger, Cyclone and like stacks on stacks, then yeah, you're forced to take it and I have like two Renektons, but like, Generally, the ones down here, you, you try to not take unless you have like tons of copies of them. Um, same rule goes for the two costs. There's only one giga one, which is hold the line. Very good for like a uh, Kaisa reroll. And like Rel is just really good with defensive items, like probably one of the best. Just keep in mind you want like pure defensive items on her. And I go more into like how to play these comps on the meta snapshot, which we update every single Friday. So definitely check that out if you need more info there. This guide, I'm trying to just focus more on the augments. Not so much on how to play the comps, but Hextech Retribution, very good for the LeBlanc meta right now. Uh, Small Game Hunter, super, super good in the early game for win streaking, and Pike is just a good unit, and hackers are good right now, so that's why it's so high up. Sivir Mana Tempering, 
Um, you only really take this if you have the Infiniteam units, Channel Ferromancy, that's just for the AP comps or any like rel comp in general. Ruthless Blades, I guess if you want to reroll Draven, it's pretty good. Uh, time and a half, if you have like 80 items for your Sivir or it gives you Sivir 2, then like, yeah, take it. Burning Spirit, pretty good for um, all the Bellslinger comps. Raider Spoil, like this one's a sure, it's decent. Uh, League of Draven, Boxing Lessons, Unrelenting Force. These are like situational. Uh, maybe if it gives you like a two star of the version, it's fine. Boxing lessons, it's like brawlers just aren't that great right now. So that's why even though it's like one of the very good augments and it's pretty flexible, it's still like middle tier just because brawlers are pretty bad right now. Uh, unrelenting force, if you have like two star buy, sure. If you have like tons of defensive items that you could build on her right away, then yeah, do it. Uh, but the rest here, they're just like not as good. Uh, it's just the meta, how it's treating them, but obviously if you have like a billion copies of the unit, then like sure, go for it. Um, I've seen someone take Winds of the Wanderer with, I think they had Yasuo 2 before they took it, and they went 6. <sighs> Your mileage may vary, but like this just isn't a very good augment right now, so I don't know what the criteria is for some of these. Like maybe it is truly never take, but most of these when I say no, it's like only take them one out of every 100 games or something like that. Uh, for the three costs, Morgana, three costs are very rare, by the way. So if you want to like spend time studying which augments to take, focus on the one and two costs and then silver, gold, and prismatic because three cost ones, they pretty much never happen. And the time it does, like, um, that's when you could probably open up the sheet and just look it up. But if you have like a limited amount of time to like study augments, uh, probably skip this section. But it is still important if you're trying to get like every situation covered which i kind of have to do but maybe you don't so all these ones up here fear is freedom spike shell time knife multi-shot and recursion matrix they're all really really good so the only one that's a little weird to play around is time knife uh, you just want to use that to kind of win streak with and then just like play shen later on shen augments are just really good in stage two in general because it gives you a shen um, and he's just like a pretty solid unit early on obviously with time knife you want to do like the six defender build um, but yeah, if you get like perfect conditions for Shen, it's really good. Uh, Multi-shot, very good for Kaiser right now. Kaiser's just a good comp in general with quick draw. Recursion Matrix, probably like the best defensive augment in the game even. Like maybe, it might be. But yeah, for three costs, these are pretty much like the almost always take. The ones in the always section down here, like LeBlanc Mirror Image is pretty much scuffed Woodland Charm, uh, but it is really good. Uh, Behemoth and Undercurrent. Undercurrent is really weird. It's good in the early game, but I'd say it's like bad in the late game because in the late game you want to cast twice. But in the early game, like it gives your team a big burst in the beginning of the game. And if you ever have like a two star caster, like if you have a two star Lux or something like that, she just casts right away, does a big AOE because everyone groups up. Um, it could be pretty powerful. And that works for like any two star backliner. Um, aim assist, good for LeBlanc reroll forcing. Spread shot, if you have 80 items, yeah. Uh, temper Tantrum, if you have like uh, 80 items for Nar and like a good Gadgetine start, then sure. Power Grid, uh, if you have blue buff, yes, like blue buff. But then around this point, it does kind of like change the dynamic a bit. Like the Shurs, it's like, yeah, if you're forcing these comps for their traits, like, yeah, you can take them, but that's pretty much the only time you would. Uh, Rammus is really the only kind of flexible one, but right now the meta is mostly AP, so I don't think the armored Dillo is going to be like that, that good. This Nar Augment is a huge bait at all stages in the game. Reverberation, uh, Anima is kind of bad right now, so only take this if you have incredible Anima start. And then these other ones just don't take, like Jubilant Veil. The effect is very good. If you get Jubin Veil for a comp that needs it on like stage four, it's the best thing ever. But it's just not a good early game augment. So I, I personally wouldn't take it. But again, free country, you could do whatever you want. But yeah, that's pretty much gonna be it for this early game augment guide. You could like pull up this website. There are right, 30 plus people on it. Holy cow, I just released this like, posted it on the website with no announcement like 30 minutes ago, like before I started recording this. That is incredible. But uh, this will be on the website, bunnymuffins.lol. And it's just on like the homepage that so you click here and then it's just right here. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much gonna be the guide for today. If you need like help on like choosing augments, like this is what pretty much everything you need to know. And I'm gonna be using this as well. Some people may notice when I stream twitch.tv slash bunnymuffinslol, I'm like, oh, let me like check my augment list. This is what I'm checking. So uh, it's kind of like playing like me, but yeah. 
Of course, there are gonna be play style differences and don't forget like all these little tips up here because that's generally gonna be how you can approach the game. And if you guys want like a guide for like what augments to take later on in the game, that guide's pretty much impossible to do. It's gonna really de just depend on what your board looks like. So it's like giving maybe relationship advice. It's gonna be different if someone is like casually dating, someone's in a relationship or if someone's married, like you could kind of consider that as like stage two, stage three, stage four augments. What you need to do in those situations is gonna be completely different based on like who you're dating, I guess. But that's just an analogy I thought up like just now for that. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, there's no guide on like getting married, you know? It's like, you just, depends on the person that you meet, you know? And like what your dynamic is and stuff. So like, yeah, that's pretty much all the stuff I have to say for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and uh, subscribe below, go to the website, Twitch, all that stuff. And I will see you all later.